Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can see my slides. Um, thank you yes. so much for having me. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for the feedback. Thank you so much for having me. Um, I am coming off of Rabbi Schwartz, who spoke about the four children, and I am going to be speaking about four short topics. Yachal Merash Chodesh, Mitzchila, Hayu Avotenu, Avdei Avodah Zarah, Baruch Shomer Haftach Atali Yisrael, and Vehisha Amda. Um, so we'll get right into it. So these four topics together um, seemingly are kind of random, very short sections in the Haggadah that really precede our telling of the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim, which we'll hear from next from Rabbi Etchalom, and he'll discuss this, how we expand on these psukim from Bikurim when we say Aramiyo Vedavi, which is the next section that we'll learn. Um, and so I, I thought to myself, you know, it's it's interesting that these four sections kind of are sandwiched between the Arba Banim and the um, and the Psukim of Bikurim of the story of Itziat Mitzrayim. And I was trying to make sense of these four these four short sections. Um, and so I thought it would be interesting to try to understand if there's something that unites them together. Now, I, I started to try to think about this, and what I noticed about the Yachal Mirash Chodesh section, which is the first section up here, um, this is a section talking about when should we start telling the story of the Haggadah, when should we start telling the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, and there's a conversation in the Gemara, maybe we should start, maybe we have a Hava Amina, maybe we should start from Mirash Chodesh. Um, and I have a very close friend here. Her name is Michal Lashansky. She actually used to work for the National uh, Library in Israel. And she exposed me to some really interesting Haggadot. And you can really you can find them online. It's an amazing archive. And what I found, I was going through this with her, is that actually me many of the Haggadot present this first section of Yahol as being with the She'eno Yodei Ali Shal. And you can see that over here, where they have this big vehigadata, but it's really part of the same paragraph. This is a Haggadah, the golden Haggadah, I think it's from 1320, um, a Sephardic Haggadah. Um, and you can see that this section of Yachal Merosh Chodesh over here, starting right there, um, is actually really going, it, it continues from the section of She'eno Yodei Elisha. And you can say the same, same thing, this is a North African Mahsar from the 18th, uh, 19th, 18th or 19th century. You could see that the paragraphs just go right into each other, from the She'eno Yodei Elisha to Behigada Talavincha Yachal Mirash Chodesh. And I think the reason is because the She'eno Yodei Alisho, the pasuk that we use, the verse that we use to answer or to try to evoke some knowledge for this son or for this child who is not sure how to ask a question, is the same pasuk as we expand upon for Yacho um, Mirash Chodesh. Maybe, maybe we should be reading the Haggadah or maybe we should be telling the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim from Rosh Chodesh. And I don't want to get into it too too much, but suffice it to say, uh, maybe I'll disappoint Rabbi Kalman, but I'm going to leave this section of Yachal Merash Chodesh as part of the Arba Banim, as part of the four children, because I do think that there is some thematic connection, which we will not discuss today. But this made my job easier, because instead, our job now is to try to link these next three shorter verses, these next three shorter paragraphs, and leave out the Yachal Merash Chodesh, why that is, is for a separate share for a different time. So let's um, march forward. Now, um, I'd like to skip this Mitzchila section just for a second. We will come back. But moving on to Baruch Shomer Haftachatoli Israel, and we'll get into the text a little bit. This text is about um, blessing Hashem, thanking Hashem for keeping his promise to Israel. And it goes through the Brit Ben Habitarim the famous um, covenant that Hashem makes with Abraham, and I'll read it for you. Baruch Shomer Haftachatali Israel, Baruch Hu, blesses Hashem who kept his promise to Israel. Shakadosh Baruch Hu Chishev Ed HaKetz, La So Kamosh Amar La Avraham Avinu Bivrit Ben Habtarim. 
he calculated the end of our exile. How? You should know, Hashem says to Avram, that your children will be strangers in a strange land. They're going to suffer in this land. They're, they will be oppressed for four, a 400 year period. Right, so I will judge this nation, and then they will leave this place with with lots of wealth and um, with much property. And this is largely thought in Bereshit. This is largely thought to be the um, a nivua, a prophecy about the future of um, Yitziat Mitzrayim, which is why we bring it in for Pesach. And of course, that makes sense after we talk about this Brit, after we talk about this covenant, that we would then read the very famous song that most of us, many of us, I think, sing at the Seder, of Vahisha Amda. What are we talking about? This that has stood for us, Vahisha Amda Lavotenu Vilanu. This is talking about the Haftacha, the Brit that we just mentioned um, of the Brit Ben Haftarim. And Vihisha Amda takes a little bit of literary license here, where it says, This breed is not only talking about one nation, but it's talking about This is something that is that happened after Yitziat Mitzrayim. It continued throughout our history, and it continues, as we know very well, to happen to us today but that we should remember HaKadosh Baruch Hu Matzil, Miyadam. Hashem will save us every time this happens over and over again. And so we understand why these two sections, Baruch Shomer and Vehi Amda, are so very closely linked. Vehi talking about this, this Brit Ben Habtarim, this Brit is a reminder for us, a symbol for us. Before we talk about and expand upon the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, we should remember that this is a timeless story for us, which leaves us really, oh, uh, there was one thing I wanted to mention, thank you to my slides, um, that the the actual Brit, the Yada Teda from Bereshi, um, I think that what the Haggadah is really saying in Vihisha Amda is that you can tell in Genesis, in Bereshit, that the Brit was actually anonymous, right? We're not really sure which nation is going to enslave us. It says that we're going to be in Be'eretz Lolahem, Be'gamet Hagoya Sheri Avadun Damanachi, this nation, whoever it is. And what Vihisha Amda is essentially saying is that, yes, this Brit is timeless. We're not sure which nation in every generation it will be a new nation. And so skipping um, back up to this Mitzchila, what is this paragraph doing here before we talk about the Brit Ben Haptarim? And it's a very strange paragraph. It's a, it's kind of confusing. I want to read it with you together. And I think this will be the crux, really, of what we're talking about today. It says, Mitzchila of De Avodah Zarah Hayu Avotenu. Our forefathers were of De Avodah Zarah, Va'achshav Kervanu Hamakam La'avodato, and now... Hashem has brought us to um, to serving Him. Shenemar, like it says, Vayomer Yehoshua al Kol Ha'am. Here's what Yehoshua says: Koamar Hashem elokei Yisrael, beever hanar yashvu avatechem meolam terach avi Avraham vaavi Nachor vaavadum Elohim acherim. So it quotes this pasuk from Sefer Yehoshua, going through the history of Bnei Yisrael before they got to Mitzrayim starting all the way back with Avraham's father, Terach, who was the father of both Avraham and Nachor, who served other gods. Um, so I took, says, says Yehoshua, through Hashem, I took Avraham from the other side of the Nahar, from the other side of the river, and I brought him to Eretz Canaan, and I multiplied his children, his seed through Yitzchak, Vatan Li Yitzchak at Yaakov at Esav. I gave, I gave Yitzchak two sons, Yaakov and Esav. I gave Esav, don't worry, I won't forget about him. Etan la Esav at Har Seir, La Rashad Ota. I gave him Har Seir, the Yaakov Uvanav, Yardu Mitzrayim. And then Yaakov and his sons went down to Egypt. And after we read this paragraph, then we go back in time and read the Brit Ben Habtarim that we just reviewed. 
which is to me very strange. I think there's a lot of questions about this paragraph. What is it really doing here? And we'll, we'll get into some of the specific questions really, but what is this paragraph really doing here? And what does it have anything to do with the subsequent paragraphs, the Brit Ben Habtarim and the Hisha Amda? And really, why do we need it at all? Um, and so as I I've been doing this year for Pesach, I got a little bit back into some interesting Haggadot, I think, some ancient Haggadot. And I wanted to see how they depicted this paragraph of Mitzchila from Sefer Yehoshua. And I thought it, it's interesting to see some of the artwork, because oftentimes artwork really helps us with um, how different Haggadot or how different uh, time periods interpret it. There's a lot of interpretation in artwork. And you could see here, this is a Hamburg Haggadah from 1728 where you can see somebody who's building idols or who's fashioning idols, chiseling idols. You see, these are idols over here. That's uh, from 1728. There's an Amsterdam Haggadah, but actually this picture is featured in many of the older Haggadah. This is from 1738. Um, and you can see here for the Mitrila paragraph, we have the a picture of um, Avraham Avinu, who is sitting with the Shlosha and Ashim, the three who we call the, the three angels who are coming to tell him about the destruction of Stom, that he'll have a son, that he'll be okay from his Brit Milah, that very famous scene in Sefer Bereshit, which I think is an interesting way to depict this paragraph, Mitzchila of Deavodazara. And finally, a really interesting, I think, the Prague Haggadah in 1526 has this picture here of two people in a boat who um, seemingly maybe are crossing the Nahar, crossing this river that's spoken about in this paragraph, um, which is also just an interesting depiction of this Mitzchila. So those are three, three different depictions. Um, I think really there are some really real questions about this paragraph and I'll, I'll just ask a few of them. We're not going to get into most of them, but I want us to keep them in the back of our minds. Firstly, why is it important when Yahushua is speaking or why is it so important to the person who put together, the people who put together the Haggadah to start the story with Terach, Avram's father? Can we just start with Avraham? Why even mention this river at all? Why do we care about Esav inheriting anything? Why is that an important feature of this paragraph? And why does the Haggadah stop the story, stop this telling of how we got down to Egypt with the saying, Yaakov Ubanav Yardu Mitzrayim? Why not continue the story? Which is very strange. And there's more and more and more questions, right? Um, I'm sure you yourselves can think about. But we're actually going to leave these questions because the question that I really want to talk about is the idea that this, um, or the, the reality that this sentence, that these sentences come from Sefer Yehoshua. And I find it interesting and, and very strange every time the Haggadah does this, where the Haggadah, in order to explain our experiences in Mitzrayim, in order to explain how we got to Mitzrayim, it draws on places in the Torah or in the Tanakh, which talk about the story in Mitzrayim, but are not directly from the story of Mitzrayim. And we see this in the most salient way in what Rav Ed Shalom will talk about next, the Tse'umad, Mabi Keshlavan Ha'arami, the, sto the um, stories of Arami of Vedavi. How there's somebody who's coming to give his Bikurim, and he tells the story of Yitziat Mitzrayim in third person. Like, I wasn't there, but here's kind of what happened in order for us to get to Egypt. Vayered Mitzrayim, Yaakov went down to Mitzrayim, Vayagar Shamim Temeat, Vayisham Lagoy Gadol And he became a great nation in Mitzrayim. And these are the psukim that we then expand upon, and we then draw from Sefer Shmot, from the actual story of Yitziat Mitzrayim. We have this third person narrative. I think it's interesting also here, we have a narrative which is not directly from Sefer Shmot, not directly from the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, but rather looking back and saying, this is what happens in the past. And this is this was the, um, this was the story in my eyes, says, says Yehoshua. And so the question that I wanna spend a few minutes on today is what is the significance of having Yehoshua's voice in the Haggadah at all? Why is it important that we hear 
from Yahushua specifically, especially in light of the fact that in just a few minutes after we sing Behisha Amda, we're going to hear from another external voice to the story of Yitzhak Mitzrayim, the story of the Bikuri. Um, and so I want to think about together who was Yahushua. And we'll go through his life and some of the things that we know about Yehoshua. Um, Yehosh the first time we meet Yehoshua is in the war with Amalek. So Yehoshua leaves Mitzrayim with everybody in Sefer Shmon. And at the very end of Parsha B'Shalach, we encounter Yehoshua um, during the war with Amalek, where Yehoshua was really the Tsar Tzava. He was the warrior who led the war with Amalek. And if, if those who remember, this was the war where Moshe was on a mountain and when his arms were up, Bnei Yisrael were winning the war. And when his arms were down, they were losing the war. Um, we then meet Yehoshua later on in Sefer Bamidbar, where he has a conversation with Moshe about Eldad and Medad. He was a student of Moshe. Eldad and Medad were two people who were prophesizing in the camp, and he and Moshe have a conversation about that. Then we famously meet Yehoshua as one of the Miraglim, who he was the Miragel, he was the um, the spy for Shevet Ephraim. And of course, he was one of the two, him and Kalev, who survived um, the Magefa um, or the, the killing of the Miraglim because he brought Dibatov, he brought good words, Besaratavot um, from Israel. Um, and so he was able to survive the 40 year sojourn in the desert. He's then appointed as the next leader of Bnei Israel prior to Moshe's death. And he takes Bnei Israel from the Midbar, from the desert, into Eretz Canaan through the Jordanian Passage, the Jordan River. Um, he then is a judge for the people. He's also a Navi. Um, at the very end of Sefer Yahushua, of the Book of Joshua, he stops a near civil war where um, the tribes of Reuben and Gad were trying to build a Mizbeach, to build an altar. This angered Bnei Israel greatly because they were on the other side of the Jordan River, and Yehoshua is able to stop and mitigate um, and bring Bnei Israel back together, which he does at the very end of his life, um, and where he gathers Bnei Israel together, and he um, and he and together Bnei Israel bury Yosef's bones in Shechem. And if we think about this, Yehoshua really in his life is the manifestation of the completion of the Brit Ben Habtarim. Through Yehoshua's life, we really see that it's true. Yehoshua was a slave in Egypt at the beginning of his life. He then moves through all the trials and tribulations that Bnei Israel went through to get to Eretz Canaan, to Eretz Israel. Um, he leads them through that. And then his life really comes, his li not his life, but really the life of his people comes full circle at the very end of his life when he brings Yosef's bones to rest. Of course, Yosef, who brought us down to Mitzrayim. And so Yehoshua's life, in a way, is this realization of the Brit Ben Habtarim. And when Yehoshua is making this speech to the nation, when he's making the speech of the history of Bnei Israel, which we read about in the Haggadah, in these verses, Mitzchila Hayu Avatenu of the Avodah Zarah, he is, he's really speaking from this place of explaining to them how this breed was fulfilled. And I want to show you how in this speech, Yehoshua is um, really um, bringing home this idea or emphasizing this idea that Bnei Israel have moved from being of de paro and of de other gods, and now it's their job to become of de Hashem, to become servants of God. And throughout his speech, and I just um, I brought just a, a few sukim, a few examples from chapter twenty-four in Yehoshua. Really, the mila mancha or the light word or the the important word that comes out is this word evet is this word working um, and serving. And you could see here, I'll just read this first pasuk, pasuk Yudalad from Yehoshua. He says to Bnei Israel, et Hashem be'emet, you should fear Hashem and you should serve him. Ve'hesiru et Elohim asher and you should get rid of the gods 
that your forefathers used to serve, be'ever hanar b'mitzrayim ve'avdu ve'ivdu a Hashem, and instead you should serve Hashem. Um, and this is a theme throughout his speech, moving from serving Paro or serving these gods in Mitzrayim to being of de Hashem and to serving Hashem. And what Yehoshua does, I think, so beautifully is then um, at the end of this chapter, it says, Vayichrot Yehoshua Brit. He, he reestablishes this covenant with Bnei Israel. And what he's reminding them of is it's true. This Brit Ben Habtarim is fulfilled, and we are the manifestation of this fulfillment, he's almost saying to Bnei Israel. But we also have a role in this Brit. It's not a one way street that Hashem will just keep saving us, but we have to remember our role as being of De Hashem. And Yehoshua is actually very savvy in the way he sets this up. It says, Vayikra Yehoshua Brit La'am Bayom Hahu. He brings them to Shechem, where he buries Yosef's bones. Um, and beautifully, I think, says Rabbi Michael Haddon, he has a, a series of shirim on Sefer Yehoshua. He says that what is Yehoshua doing? He's summoning the people for the last time in his life. Yehoshua gathers them to the ancient Shechem. To that site nestled pic picturesquely between Har Grizim and Har Eval, their ancestor, Avraham, had first arrived. So what is Yehoshua doing? He's reminding the people that the first place Avraham came to when he was told, The first place Avraham came to was the place of Shechem. And what Yehoshua is really setting up for us, bringing us full circle from the Brit Ben Habtarim to establishing this new Brit where we have a role now in the Brit as well to be of De Hashem. And before I end, I want to bring one more, one more quick idea about this manifestation of the Brit is that we have in the Torah um, these warnings, what will happen if we break this breed, if we break the covenant with Hashem? And it's actually mentioned at least um, at two very salient times in the Torah. One in Parsha Pechukotai at the end, uh, we'll read in a few weeks at the end of Sefer Vayikra, and once in Parsha Kitava in Sefer Dvarim. And this is, of course, the Tochacha, which we read quickly and quietly that if we don't listen to Hashem, if we are not of De Hashem, what will happen to us? And at the end of the Tochacha in Dvarim, in, um, sorry, in Parshat Kitava, it ends off with this interesting pasuk. It says, what, what will happen to us? Hashem Mitzrayim, that Hashem will take us back to Egypt, Ba'oniyot. Like this is like the worst thing that can happen to us if we break this breach with Hashem. Hashem will bring us back to Egypt, Ba'oniyot on ships, on boats, which feels like, okay, you know, after all the horrible things we say that will happen to B'nai Israel, famine, war, childless, childlessness, all these horrible things will return Ba'oniyot. Um, there's a beautiful shiur that I think Rav Yalbi Noon gave many years ago. Um, and you can also find there's an article on it. And he says, why is this important? Why is this the capstone? Why does this cap off this tochacha of what will happen if we break this breed? Because it is the very undoing of the covenant that we made with God. We say, Anochi Hashem Elokecha in the Aseret Hadibrod, I am Hashem, Asher Hatseiticha Meretz Mitzrayim. The whole way that you became a nation was that I took you out of Egypt. And how did I take you out of Egypt? I took you out of Egypt um, by walking you through the Yamsuf. You walked by Yabasha B'tachayam. You walked by yourselves free on dry land where the Mayim was on either side. And if we undo this breed, if we go against this breed, I will then bring you back on the water Ba'oniyot, against your will in a way that's very passive, says Hashem. I thought this was interesting because it reminded me so much of the Haggadah we talked about at the beginning, where the um, artistic depiction in the Haggadah was of this boat, which I thought was very strange, but almost perhaps in a very meaningful way, really, the Prague Haggadah is telling us that it's true, we were brought, um, uh, um, Abraham came ever Hanahar, 
He went over the Nar to come into Eretz Yisrael, but we do not want to undo the Brit and have to go back over Ba'oniyot on boats. So um, I hope that we now understand the link and why it's so important to really read this Mitzchila paragraph before we get to Vihisha Amdan, before we get to the Haftacha and the Brit Ben Haftarim, and how Yehoshua really shows us the manifestation of the Hisha Amda and our active role, um, an ongoing and active role in this Brit, and how Yehoshua really is the person to teach us that lesson, that lesson with his understanding and his deep understanding and vision for the Brit. And we, may we all be Zoha for the Hisha Amda Lavotene Vilana. Chag Kasher Vesameach. Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca, very much. There is one little question I see. I'll just, why do we talk about Asaph? Ah, yes, beautiful. Um, that's actually, <laughs> that's a, a whole different shiur. I didn't really get into the actual content of some of what Yehoshua said. It's, it's a really excellent question. Um, there is actually a fabulous shiur by Rabbi Foreman on his Aleph Beta, where he really expands on this idea of Asaph. So I won't give it away because it is a lengthy shiur. So Right now, I'll say I'll leave that question, and it's a good one.